Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. We have an important episode today ahead of a major event in the world of municipal governance and advocacy. Today, we are honored to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with Carol Saab, the CEO of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. The FCM is at the forefront of empowering local governments across Canada, striving to enhance the quality of life for residents. From tackling the housing crisis and building resilient infrastructure to spearheading climate change adaptation efforts, Canadian municipalities are on the front lines of our nation's most pressing challenges. FCM's strength lies within its unity, though. With nearly 2,100 municipalities from coast to coast to coast, representing over 92% of Canadians, FCM harnesses a powerful collective voice. This unity enables the organization to drive significant influence and achieve remarkable results. Now, as we approach FCM's annual convention in Calgary from June 6th to June 9th, 2024, today we will discuss the mission of this year's gathering, the pivotal role FCM plays in addressing municipal issues across our great country, the successes the organization has achieved since their last meeting in Toronto, and so much more. Stay tuned as we explore how FCM is shaping a better future for communities across Canada. This is Municipal Affairs. Carol, thank you so much for your time today. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, municipal leaders from across Canada are going to be descending upon Calgary, Alberta from June 6th to June 9th for the upcoming annual convention. Redefining our future is this year's theme of the annual convention. What inspired this year's theme and focus for the convention? Well, thanks very much, Chris. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you, uh, really just ahead of our, our conference. And I'll just um, share with you that this is slated to be our biggest FCM conference in history. Uh, we're at 2,800 participants and climbing steadily, reaching, I think, quickly our, our safety thresholds, actually. And so um, we may just, in fact, sell out uh, this conference for the first time. Um, redefining our future, chosen very deliberately as, as a summation theme of what it is that we hope to continue to collectively achieve with our members, with this conference being a real high, high point for our ability to engage them in this conversation. And um, certainly, you know, from coast to coast to coast, I know you've been speaking with our members, municipalities are really seized with both the challenges they're experiencing in their communities, um, but also the opportunity that they're faced with in the context of what it's possible when municipalities are enabled to deliver in the way that Canadians can and should expect in a country like ours. And so um, there is real momentum and FCM has been championing a new municipal growth framework, which is, you know, a real new way to empower municipalities um, with new resources that grow with the economy and population to help them both withstand the challenges, but also really lever the kind of opportunity that we should be able to, um, to advance and scale in the context of our growth. Um, and so this is really a moment in time where we're working hard as, as an order of government to redefine our future. The conference is certainly going to be very focused on this thematic. There's a lot of conversation around it with our members, um, and certainly uh, it's a real opportunity with, with so many of them there um, to be able to engage this conversation meaningfully. Is there a key takeaway that you're hoping that attendees from your post and what you just said about 2800 as of recording this are going to be there? Is there a key takeaway that you're hoping that the municipal leaders will take away and bring back to their communities to help sort of help define what FCM role will be for the next year to 2025? Yeah, I think I think the key takeaway is that you know, we have to continue to be ambitious in this conversation. And certainly, um, I don't see our members taking their foot off the gas pedal in this conversation. The the circumstances and necessity um, of this conversation nationally across all orders of government continues to be important. We're seeing the real challenges of a housing crisis. We're about to enter, you know, wildfire season. All kinds of climate related um, disasters that that are going to unfold. Unfortunately across the country um, and you layer that with mental health crises the opioid crises all of the very real things that are facing our country in the context um, of really exponential growth and so um, we're you know we've been we've been making very steady progress you know it was just last year at our annual conference that we really launched um, launched the concept of the municipal growth framework and have been engaging both our members but also the federal and provincial orders of government in this conversation we've made 
made remarkable progress, which we hope to shine a spotlight on in this in this conference as well. But more importantly, um, to drive home a message that the job's not done and that we've got to continue pressing forward, um, that Canadians deserve to, to really be able to expect um, quality services, a high quality of life in their communities in, the, in a country like ours. Um, and that for us to get there, it's going to require an ambitious conversation. And right now it looks like the municipal leaders are the ones that are going to drive it. Um, and so we've got to keep our shoulder at the wheel together. Just on that note alone, uh, I was recently at the SUMA convention in Regina in April, and I had the pleasure of asking Scott Moe, the premier, if he would be in favor of that call that FCM has been doing around federal, provincial, and municipal leaders around a new fiscal framework. He said more more conversation is always more welcomed. Does that give you hope that other premiers will potentially sign on to have that discussion in potentially 2024 or early 2025? It does. It does. We saw. We certainly saw his his response to your question. I've heard that directly in his conversations with our members in Saskatchewan as well. Um, we know, you know, Saskatchewan's a great example of a place where they've already made some progress through a revenue sharing model. You know, we have other progress to build on in the province of Quebec. Um, really making big strides in in a different looking fiscal reality for municipalities as well. Um, and we are hearing increasingly this notion of, you know, I, I think facts are facts. Data is data, and as you look around, it's clear that the status quo isn't working. It's clear to every order of government. Um, and so I think the necessity of this conversation is, and how how unavoidable it is, um, is really starting to take root across all orders of government. We've heard um, also some, some positive signaling from, from the federal government right now, and we're talking to parties really across the, the political spectrum um, about the re need to really take an ambitious vision here and, and redefine um, how it is that we're going to work together, how orders of government are going to bring their respective levers to the table, what our collective priorities are, and then how we're going to resource them to get the job done for Canadians. And so um, I'm I'm optimistic based on the, the trajectory of this conversation. You know, in one year, we've really gone from it not being a topic of conversation to it being a very real topic of conversation um, in an interjurisdictional context. And it's complicated, there's no doubt. It's complex in a federal federation like ours as a country. Um, and it's important because at the end of the day, there are Canadians who are relying on these services, relying on the kinds of outcomes that we should be able to deliver to them. And so um, I'm pleased, I was very pleased to, to hear that response um, from the Premier. Um, I think we're seeing some uh, interesting conversations in other parts of the country take hold too, and, and we're keen to continue to advance them. This last year has been, there's been a major focus on housing, especially at a municipal level. FCM released a survey earlier this year that it, roughly $107,000, $107,000 for one unit of housing for a municipality, just on average, to build. Um, is that going to be a focus of this year's uh, preliminary sessions, workshop shop sessions at this year's convention? Because housing has been a main focus. And in my conversations from the smallest community to the largest, housing seems to be on the forefront of a lot of municipal yeah. leaders' minds. Yeah, no kidding, Chris. It really, it really is on the forefront of everyone's minds, you know. And I, I continue to stress this in my conversations with with federal counterparts that um, truly this isn't uh, just a big city issue. Communities of all sizes are really grappling grappling with a housing affordability challenge, with a homelessness crisis that's really playing out in communities of all sizes as well. Um, and so this remains a very, very serious priority for for the municipal order of government. Accordingly, will be focused on at our conference as well. Um, and Parallel to that, and really sort of necessarily so, is a conversation around infrastructure um, and housing related infrastructure as well. You know, we, we FCM really pushed um, quite hard ahead of the federal budget to make the case that um, a housing plan, while we were advocating for one, um, really wouldn't be able to make progress without a corresponding infrastructure plan with housing and enabling infrastructure. And that's when you look at the context of, of just housing and where we need to go. Um, but as you know, the whole context text for this is that municipalities have really been underfunded for decades and that our funding model hasn't kept pace with growth. You know, StatsCan's um, 2020 public infrastructure survey, 14% um, of municipal waste and water, uh, wastewater infrastructure um, is in 
poor condition or very poor, 14% of municipal transportation assets in that same category. Um, it really highlights the high cost of, of renewing and rehabilitating all municipal assets in that kind of condition um, and put it in the range of $170 billion, and that's in 2024, right? And prices have only, have only gone up from there. And so, I mean, the conversation is huge, right? Housing and infrastructure go hand in hand. That will be a main focus of our conversation. Um, but of course, as you know, as I'm sure has been um, highlighted in many of your conversations, it's not the only focus um, because municipalities are on the front lines of so many conversations um, going forward. I'll, I'll, you know, we have sort of thematics across the range, sustainability and resilience, a heavy focus on that as well. Um, and maybe I'll just take this opportunity, Chris, to highlight as well that we really are going to be shining a spotlight um, and mobilizing around addressing the harassment of elected officials as well. Um, strategies for safer leaders um, to safeguard our democracy. It, it is going to be the focus of several conversations, including our closing plenary session, um, which is really going to explore strategies to foster more safer, um, more inclusive environments um, for all elected officials, and particularly for women and diverse municipal leaders who, who face that disproportionately. And so um, this is the, the not the start, but a real sort of moment in time for us. And we're going to build um, very, very aggressively from here on taking that on as an issue um, that's playing out, I would say, in all orders of government. But our focus certainly is is protecting the space um, and the and enabling the participation of municipal leaders. So I just want to pick up on that for a second, if you don't mind, because it literally I had a conversation the day before recording this interview with Greater Sudbury Councillor Natalie LeBay, and she has been harassed. She has been stalked. She has she the person who harassed her and stalked her has been charged. Uh, my inbox has flooded since that interview has been released with municipal leaders from across Canada, from the smallest village to the largest communities, talking about their own harassment. Does it concern yeah. FCM that? our municipal frontline politicians are being sort of inundated with this harassment and it could potentially change the way people view the role of a municipal politician and not want to get into it. Greatly. It greatly concerns us. And, and I think what you're describing is, is the reality. I live in my vantage point as well. You know, I have a bird's eye view across the country of the municipal landscape. And I hear from friends and colleagues in the municipal space across the country, um, the kind of example that you highlighted in that conversation, you know, everywhere folks are just facing an escalated level of vitriol, of hate, of targeted, um, you know, targeted, you um, action against their families even you know it's really gotten to to a completely untenable unsafe um, an undemocratic place. And it is pushing people out. You know, we've had folks who have left municipal government citing this, this very toxic culture um, and their inability to continue on in it. And, and you know, FCM runs um, a program that is focused on, on reducing the barriers uh, to women and diverse candidates from engaging in municipal politics. Um, and part of the research we've done in that case really sort of canvases um, folks across the country about what they identify as the barriers. And this is the number one barrier Barrier that people cite when they say, I will not consider running because of this. I won't put myself through it. I won't put my family through it. Um, and in a context where, where we're facing real serious challenges as a country, where Canadians need help um, in a real way to make ends meet, to sort of have us imagine a, a different looking future going forward. Um, it really is not only tragic, but, but I think sort of rocks foundationally our, our democratic principles. If, if people feel like they can't engage the democratic process, they can't put their names forward, they can't provide leadership because they don't feel safe to do it. And so um, you'll see accordingly so, uh, FCM has been sort of taking this on and ramping up our work in this space. There'll be a, a heavy emphasis on it necessarily so at the conference. Um, and we're gonna continue down, down the path because something's gotta change. It's just, Chris, it's just completely untenable. I agree wholeheartedly um, with an active roughly about 2,100 members of municipalities from across this great country from coast to coast to coast with such diverse issues facing each one of those communities. I was just talking to the deputy mayor of St. John's Newfoundland and Labrador this morning and it was we were talking about health care and mental health and addictions. Then I talked to the mayor of Haslow, British Columbia, and we were talking about affordability crisis. How does FCM prioritize the 
its advocacy initiatives to ensure effective representation from the largest city to the smallest municipality, hypothetically, of Torquay. And I, I always throw a Torquay reference in just to please Mayor <laughs> Mike Strachan. So <laughs> how do you balance that? Well, I'll say hi, Mayor Mike. If you're listening, I'm glad. I'm glad we got a nod to you uh, in this in this segment. Um, listen, this is this is something we take really seriously. You know, FCM advocates for um, the needs of our members. Uh, again, geographically diverse from coast to coast to coast, but also diverse in size. We have our biggest city in Toronto, um, all the way down to to Torquay. You know, the, as we've just referenced, and um, we have uh, very deliberate processes and work in place um, through our rural forum our Northern and Remote Forum to make sure that we're engaging and understanding the needs of those communities um, and that we prioritize them uh, in parallel with the needs of at a different scale of municipalities uh, of the largest size, but also the mid-sized communities. And, you know, what's interesting, Chris, is that um, while certainly the scale of the challenges is, is vastly different um, and that they take, you know, very different faces and very different sizes of communities, um, at the end of the day, there are, there are really shared common challenges. Right. And one of them relative to size is the fact that um, municipalities simply aren't anymore in a place to keep up with what's being asked of them. You know, you, you look at the, the funding framework we're in established um, when Queen Victoria was still on the throne um, and certainly not imagining that cities would be responding in the frontline kind of way to the things you've just named, to a mental health crisis, to an opioids crisis, to an affordability issue, to a housing, a very serious housing crisis, to climate change um, in the way that we are. And so I think this is why this sort of sentiment of, you know, from our smallest members to our largest members, the conversation around needing to really have a rethink about how it is that we fund local government and delivering those services and quality of life to Canadians is, is critical. Um, and FCM is going to continue to, to focus uh, on the needs uh, of our members of all sizes. Um, it's both a responsibility and, and privilege we take quite seriously. Last year in Toronto, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Deputy Leader for the Conservative Melissa Lanceman, Jugmeet Singh of the NDP, Elizabeth May, all gave speeches at the FCM convention. Uh, do we have a, a, a do we know who the speakers are this year at the uh, convention here in Calgary, or is it still up in the air a little bit? Yeah, well, I uh, I can say that we're imagining uh, and expect to have a really strong representation from all the political parties again at our conference this year. Um, we have publicly confirmed that Jagmeet Singh and Elizabeth May will be speaking. Um, we have yet to confirm uh, who's going to be speaking on behalf of the government um, and but and uh, and as well as the official opposition. But I can tell you those are um, very active and encouraging conversations on both fronts, and look forward to being able to share some of those details publicly with. Um, yourself and our members across the country very soon. Is there a preliminary session that you're particularly looking forward to this year? Because I looked at the agenda prior to this interview, and it seems like it's a packed agenda for you. What are you looking forward to the most? Yeah, yeah, there are so many, you know, it's hard to it's hard to pick one. I think this year, um, more than other years, I can say quite honestly, and I this will be my 14th um, FCM annual con conference. Um, and I can tell you that, that I think we very deliberately have um, put an emphasis on what the delegate experience is going to be um, and provided um, really tangible uh, workshops. The plenary sessions are focused on sort of how are we going to enable the people at our conference to then go back into their communities and use some of these pieces um, very uh, deliberately. You know, we've talked about the municipal growth framework, so I won't focus on that, but we have an excellent panel discussion, including um, Mayor Marvin Reese, um, who's uh, sort of outgoing mayor of City of Bristol, who's been doing some incredible work in the UK on this very thematic, as well as um, the mayor of Alberta municipalities, uh, Tyler Gandam, who I know you've spoken with as well. Uh, sorry, the president of, of Alberta <laughs> municipalities, I know you've spoken with as well, mayor of Otaskawin. Um, we're focusing again, as I said, on the harassment of elected officials, um, but we also have uh, really tangible pieces again on um, resilience, on building more sustainably. Um, we're highlighting and helping members connect in with the programs that FCM launches, uh, has recently launched as well and, and overseas. Um, and so it's going to be really, I think, really exciting. Um, and I think part of the best part of our conference, as you know, um, given the diversity of our membership, is connecting them with one another. And so we've really um, sort of intended 
intentionally leverage the format, different engagement opportunities this time around so that um, municipalities of all sizes are able to send delegates that can then go back into their communities with very tangible outcomes um, from their participation in Calgary. So it is coming to the end of the Pierce era of the FCM. For the last 12 <laughs> months, President Scott Pierce, the, uh, the mayor of the great community of Gore, uh, has been at the helm of the organization for you. What was it like working hand in hand with uh, President Pierce? You know, I'll tell you um, when I when I when President Pierce was coming in, and I had a conversation with him about sort of what emphasis he wanted to put on during his term as president. Um, he said to me, I, "I want it to be on our members. I want to do everything that I can to engage with our members." And I think he has very intentionally um, put himself out there. You know, he's done a lot of engagement across the country on FCM's behalf um, with our members at the at the provincial municipal association um, conferences, but many opportunities opportunities in between there to really deeply inform um, and our understanding um, at a staff level, but also across our board um, of what's playing out in communities and what our members are experiencing and what they see as the highest value proposition of FCM and how we can continue to sort of focus in on that for them. Um, and that's been truly invaluable. You know, it's been really, really quite helpful to our work um, as staff to be able to, to have somebody out there engaged in sort of deep, meaningful um, conversations with members across the country. And so um, that I, I would say is really um, part of a legacy that he will leave. And I can tell you um, in my opening conversation with incoming president, uh, Jeff Stewart, um, he has certainly indicated to me that it's his intention to continue with that kind of a focus and that he wants to, um, that he's seen such tangible be benefit to our members um, getting to, to be more engaged um, in person conversations, um, to really be on the ground in their communities. Um, I have complete faith that he's going to be, uh, again, a steadfast champion for municipalities. And um, I'm excited to, to get to work with him. And certainly, um, as we said to Scott, he's leaving the role of president, but not the FCM world. And so will continue to be engaged uh, as well. Uh, if, if if anything is any indication of past presidents, Clark Somerville is listening to this right now and says, Scott's leaving <laughs> the presidency, but he's not leaving the job of FCM because past presidents <laughs> are always together. I, I have one last question for you because it, it's an important one as we head into the next year. Um, municipalities are at a crossroad. We've talked about it extensively in this interview so far. Do you have hope? Is there a silver lining that out of this convention, you as CEO, as FCM, will have a new focus, a new re-energy re in some sense to be able to combat some of the challenges that municipalities will face when you hear from municipal leaders from across this great country to when they talk to you and talk to other officials at this convention? I do. I do have hope, you know, Chris, and I say that so, so sincerely, um, you know, when I and it's been I will tell you, you know, it's been a rough go for municipalities and accordingly hard and a bit discouraging, you know, for us as we continue to sort of feels like we're pushing boulders up a hill um, when there are some really important uh, like issues and, and challenges playing out in the country. And especially, you know, it's especially frustrating when the progress is stalled um, primarily by a conversation around jurisdiction where, where, you know, we've proven in the pandemic and in many other critical moments that we're able to work um, very closely together and deliver quickly if, if we can sort of have that kind of conversation across orders of government. Um, but I can tell you, you know, what's been energizing for me and, and it's the reason I have hope um, is really that I, again, this year, seen the power of our membership when it's united through FCM, you know, coming into the federal budget, I can tell you, we um, really were starting to be concerned that, for example, there wasn't going to be a corresponding investment in infrastructure to match a housing plan, um, which was going to be a recipe for disaster, quite frankly, in terms of our ability to build housing across this country and, and deliver on, on the outcomes that we share um, and the objectives that we share um, with our federal counterparts on addressing the housing crisis. Um, and I saw our membership, um, you rally and unite and talk to their MPs and take to the take to the press, have conversations with their constituents and really advocate um, so strongly. And, and in a short period of time, um, we got to a place where there was a housing plan, where there's at least, I think, a very strong start to, a, to investing in infrastructure um, and renewed momentum for this conversation on a municipal growth framework. And, you know, as I said, I've been at this for a long time with FCM, um, which is, you know, truly the, a privilege of 
a lifetime to be able to to engage with local leaders in this way. Um, and uh, I've seen I've seen us have wins as an order of government and as FCM. Um, but this year, this past year, you know, even, even in with all the experience that I've had, I, I had to take a step back and and really um, say, holy smokes, when our when our members decide to speak as one and and put their shoulder to the wheel um, on something, they're able to get it done. And I can tell you, um, the conversations I'm having with our folks across the country, everybody is on board um, and really wants to continue this conversation. And so I have hope. I think I think the municipal order of government united through FCM can can do big things. I think we as a country can and should do big things. And I think Canadians expect it. And so I, I have hope. Um, it's going to be hard work. It's going to be complex work. And it's absolutely necessary. And so it's an exciting, uh, exciting time to, to get to be part of it. Well, I'm looking forward to visiting and attending this year's FCM conference as a media. So uh, we've got lined up a few interviews to speak with some mayors and councillors from across Canada during the convention. But I'm looking forward to hopefully meeting you in person, saying hello in person. Uh, Carol, it's a pleasure to sit down with you and talk about this. And I'm looking forward to seeing municipal world in the sort of grand scheme of Calgary. So thank you so much for this. Well, thank you so much, Chris. I'm looking forward to meeting you as well. We'll be good hosts, I promise. <laughs> um, and Calgary has promised us that it's going to be uh, really quite a conference. And so I'll see you there. Thanks so much for tuning in for another great episode of Municipal Affairs. I just want to remind you that we will be at this year's FCM conference from June 6th to June 9th here in Calgary, Alberta. And we are looking forward to meeting with municipal leaders from across this great country. We have so much diverse content coming up on Municipal Affairs over the month of June and July. So hit that subscribe button now, if you can. Consider backing the show. Every contribution helps us amplify the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website, or the link is in the show notes. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.